In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. The, uh, today, as we celebrate this Mass for Buddy Hannigan, uh, we have two options today of celebrating St. Faustina Kowalska. Uh, we also have St. Francis Xavier Silos. So St. Uh, Faustina was known for the revelation of divine mercy, so having lived within this past century, um, and then being the instrument through whom the image of divine mercy was communicated to the world. So there's one option. St. Francis Xavier Silos, a redemptorist who is from Germany but spent much of his time in his ministry actually in the United States. Uh, so as, as someone who was just recently beatified, uh, so Francis Xavier is another uh, great example to us as someone who is a missionary traveling around preaching and teaching. So we can call upon both, um, both uh, the saints and blesseds today. Does a saint outrank a blessed? If so, that means it goes to, to Festina. Does anyone want to vote? <laughs> we'll use St. Festina today. So. Let us prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries for his calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Hear us, God our Savior, that as we rejoice in commemorating the Virgin, St. Faustina, we may be instructed by her loving devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, after 14 years, I again went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. I went up in accord with the revelation, and I presented to them the gospel that I preached to the Gentiles, for privately to those of repute, so that I might not be running or have run in vain. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter to the circumcised, for the one who worked in Peter for an apostolate to the circumcised, worked also in me for the Gentiles. And when they recognized the grace bestowed upon me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas their right hands in partnership that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Only we were to be mindful of the poor, which is the very thing I was eager to do. And when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he clearly was wrong. For until some people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to draw back and separated himself because he was afraid of the circumcised. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not on the right road, in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of all, if you, though a Jew, are living like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? The word of the Lord. Our response oral psalm, go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. The Gospel of the Lord. The, uh, the scene in the first reading is one that might seem a little confusing. Um, so there's like, the, the re and the reason for the confusion might be uh, trying to understand just why St. Paul was so upset. So why, why did St. Paul um, respond in the way in which he did? So the, the situation was that when St. Paul first went to Jerusalem, he explained the gospel he was teaching and proclaiming to the Gentiles. And Peter and James and John were all perfectly fine with what he had to say. And when Peter came to Antioch and spent some time with Paul and with that community, they ate together, meaning Jews and Gentiles sharing a common table. And everything was fine. Until certain people came from Jerusalem, certain friends of James. And then all of a sudden, there began to be a division, and the Jews then ate separately. And one of the things scholars point out is that this might not just simply be just, oh, it's lunchtime, so let's all sit down at table. But the idea of them um, sharing at table together may also mean the idea of celebrating the Last Supper, meaning celebrating the Mass together. So would they, could they celebrate the Mass together, or did they have to be segregated? Um, for those who came out of the Jewish tradition and who still were very observant about that uh, Jewish law, of course, they would be very cautious about mingling with the Gentiles. That was a, a great command in the Old Testament. The Jews were not to mingle with the Gentiles, mostly to protect themselves. So often, um, the Old Testament is filled with stories in which, as the Jews sort of inter intermingle with Gentile nations, they end up uh, worshiping Gentile gods. Um, and so it's to keep them uh, focused on the Lord, um, so that way they might not lose their way, they were to isolate themselves to a certain extent. So there were some Jewish Christians who kept that same practice. So they would isolate themselves. So, but what's the problem? Can't we just sort? Can't we all just get along? Can't, can't we just be? Can't we be sensitive to kind of where everyone's coming from? Here's the problem: is that as soon as Peter who at first would eat with the Gentiles, and then when it didn't seem to be too popular, he withdrew. He was essentially passing judgment on the Gentiles, um, saying they're not, really, they're not really Christians. So, because if they were really Christians, if we're all part of the one body of Christ, then how could there be a division? But as soon as he observes the division and separates himself, he's starting to make the statement, not in word, but by his actions, that, well, the real Christians are here, and they're the second-class Christians, or the quasi-Christians, or the pseudo-Christians, or whatever, you want, whatever you'd like to say. And that is to deny the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. That's what, Saint, that's what Peter was doing. He was dying, denying salvation in Jesus Christ. The Gentiles believed in Christ, and so were saved. But not really saved, were they? Because they weren't observing the Mosaic Law. So who saves us, the Mosaic Law or Jesus Christ? As soon as you separate yourself, you're saying it's the law. But joining together, you can say, I acknowledge that we are all united by common faith in Jesus Christ. That's why it was so important to St. Paul. He was so, so um, critical of this for, for this important reason, so as to safeguard the central teaching of our faith. Um, the faith in Jesus Christ is what brings salvation. Um, and so one of the things that I think is, is maybe a good thing for us to be mindful of today is that sometimes we might be tempted to act or behave in a certain way, or we should, should pray also for the leadership of the church, might be tempted to act or behave in a certain way. So just sort of keep the peace. Well, let's not stir things up. Well, this seems to be too difficult. And what St. Paul was telling Peter to do is you need to stand on principle. 
when we're talking about a fundamental principle, you can't just simply compromise that for the sake of getting along uh, on something that just might not be well received by different people. Um, so St. Paul says you have to stand on the right road. That was, uh, that's the way he put it in this, um, in this passage. So it requires really a tremendous amount of courage, um, sometimes to stand fast in the face of the world when it's not convenient to do. But this is, I think, at the heart of this incident that was described between Peter and Paul today. So let us pray for courage, um, certainly to, to be kind and well-disposed toward all. But when it comes to those fundamental matters and something that is at the heart of our faith, let us, in fact, uh, be courageous, be bold, and be strong in clinging steadfastly to the gospel and to Jesus Christ. stand now to present our prayers and petitions. <clears throat> we pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the Holy People of God, uh, that we might uh, be formed well within the gospel and be witnesses of it to the ends of the earth. We pray to the Lord. For all of those who lead the church and guide the church, we pray for the gift of courage, of perseverance, and of prudence. We pray to the Lord. We pray for greater devotion to the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ, that his divine love might be more widely known and appreciated, um, especially as we give thanks for the forgiveness of our sins. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, and for a time of renewal for the priests currently on retreat. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all of the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Hannigan family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. And for the church, let us pray. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin St. Faustina, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Faustina, blessed Francis Xavier Silos, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope and Louis our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of St. Faustina, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We honor the Mother of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.